think uh, is this working? Maybe. We'll assume the audio is working. Um, Okay, well, we'll get started. Um, so this is kind of, uh, we'll call it a, our journey of modernizing our PHP application. It started as a traditional, not exactly a LAMP stack, but with Mongo. Um, we've moved to a serverless container setup at this point. So this is kind of that, that journey. A um, little bit about OCV. Uh, we do mobile apps predominantly for um, public safety, so that police, sheriff, fire, EMAs, um, public health departments, things of that nature. At this point, we've put about 600 plus in the store. Um, 45 states in Canada. Uh, uh, the, and uh, from an activity perspective, you can see uh, 50 million monthly active sessions. That's in the last two, two and a half years, of course, over the pandemic, um, everybody is very active in communication. So we've um, doubled our number of apps and we've gotten about five X times on activity. So we've uh, been looking how to improve scalability, uh, deployment, lots of DevOps topics, um, you know, from our most basic start. Uh, this was about 2010, I think, is when we started our, uh, what we call version two API and uh, control panel, which is just a content management system for our apps. It was the very traditional VPS at the time, vertical stack, Nginx, PHP, FPM. Uh, we happened to go with Mongo at the time because we weren't certain how we were gonna scale out from a content, but pretty much, you know, web server processing database. Um, obviously, there are a lot of challenges, challenges with uh, scalability in regards to that. You know, it's just upgrade your resources, upgrade your resources, downtime during that process. Um, you know, if you have to come from a backup, more downtime. Um, so really, that was just how it was at that point in time. Um, what we wanted to do was obviously go from there to a horizontal scaling model. So I'm uh, looking at kind of our early, and this may be a little hard to see. Let's see if I can. No, not. Okay. Well, I'll try to explain it a little bit. So it's pretty much what you'd expect. You know, you've got the web servers horizontally scaling with load balancer in front, in between to your processing servers and a standard NFS server kind of on the back end for shared storage. Um, that certainly helped, but it still introduced a lot of management issues because now it's, you've got to update those instances, right? So there, um, I believe we were using Ubuntu server at the time, so. Still have to manage those, update them. Um, a lot of our workload is very bursty, so auto scaling, at least in regards to the way that AWS does, it's not very effective. So it's kind of managed manually if we need to increase our um, capacity or not. Um, and we were running our own database server at that point in time as well, so it's, there's a lot of management there. Uh, you may or may not have someone on site who knows enough to actually run one of those well. Can't say I necessarily did. Um, let's see. So kind of the next evolution, and this was, uh, I believe, 2019. Our goal was to move more towards serverless uh, managed capabilities. I had stars in my eyes hoping we'd get that done in a year to a year and a half. We did not, so that's when I started working on this project to bring our previous one to a little bit more of a modern solution. So again, sorry we can't increase the size on that, but what we're looking at here is uh, 
These are the elastic container service. Um, at the time, EKS was a little bit of a mess, so otherwise this might have been a Kubernetes talk, but so we went with ECS at the time. Um, EFS, instead of hosting our own server, that could easily also be a container. Um, and then we moved over to Mongo Atlas. Not ideal, but um, we wanted to get a management off of our uh, uh, plate, and then uh, we ended up putting CloudFront in front of it so we can get some better uh, performance out of delivery to the end user. Um, let's see. The real highlights there is ECS is running on Fargate in this case, so we don't have any servers to manage. Uh, managing your own cluster is not that hard either, um, especially if it's a managed container system, um, but I didn't want to even go that far because we, we're relatively small shop on that side, uh, so taking that off of our plate was again a great opportunity. I wish I could expand that. <laughs> uh, I'll just go through it. So what this is is just how simplistic the Docker definitions for the setup are, um, kind of the bonus you know, the top one there is Nginx. All we're doing is just pulling from the official images. So um, getting that going is as simple as copying over the configuration files. Uh, for PHP FBM, there's a little bit more work we're doing. Um, obviously, we want to install the packages that we're using with our particular application. Um, and then this is the configuration change. It would be certainly something that we want to eventually get to is just copy the config file over. Um, we were only doing about three lines of changes at first and have been tweaking it since, so it's taken a while. And uh, just haven't gotten back to that part yet. Um, in regards to how that looks from a task definition, um, you know, pods work the same way in Kubernetes. You can kind of define, I want my Nginx instance, my PHP container there. Uh, we use log router to get our logs over to Datadog. Uh, but really all that's doing is, hey, I'm gonna take my memory and divide it up this way. CPU, in this case, we have a lot of uh, um, unallocated CPU that's allowed to go wherever it needs to. Uh, for the memory, uh, the reason that's highly defined um, and something you would want to do if you're gonna go this route is really understand how much memory your individual processes are using in Nginx and PHP FBM so that you can define your uh, pools pr appropriately. Um, if you don't do that, they'll overrun and end up crashing that container, um, which your management system will fire another one up, but obviously your users are gonna have a worse experience for doing that, so um, that definitely is a good thing to do. So kind of the way that looks from a, you know, this is one of our active, uh, the control panel one that I referred to. So we have 15 tasks. Each one is that kind of vertical, Nginx, PHP, FBM, uh, log router so that we're getting all those logs. Um, and that scales out horizontally as much as we need. Um, you know, if we know a hurricane's coming in and a lot of our apps are gonna have National Weather Service alerts coming out, so a lot of user activity will be coming up, we can spin those up extra, bring them back down later. Um, the way that kind of looks from a task perspective is you just, you'll be able to see them, you can go into there, see the individual containers. And this is kind of Again, you, you have the same experience with Google Cloud if you're using Kubernetes, if you're using ECS, where you can see the, uh, hopefully it's marginally readable, but uh, the larger lines there's some container failed for some reason, could be underlying hardware issues, could be ran out of memory, whatever it is, but it'll kill it, bring up a new one, replace it, and you don't have to do any work. So nobody's having them sit there and manage that process. Um, you know, some of the future enhancements we're wanting to do, we would like to move this to something like CloudFormation or a serverless framework. 
Um, right now, deployments are still quite easy. Um, you know, you just update your containers, push them up, say I'd like to use that in your next test definition or pod definition. Um, but being able to move that to a fully um, code-based infrastructure would be ideal, um, especially for deploying to prod and dev. So um, we definitely do have a dev version for testing and then promote that to prod, but it's a manual process right now, so we're going to enhance that. Um, you know, some of the gotchas in there that we've run into, if you are doing this, moving towards containers, version them. Um, you are allowed to do latest, but the gotcha there is that if you push that up and then the automated process kills one and pulls, it's going to pull whatever changes you pushed up, whether you wanted it to or not. So that's a little bit of a gotcha that you can hopefully avoid by versioning your containers and using those explicit versions um, while you're doing it. All right, that went a lot faster than I expected it to. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I kind of thought when I was writing that up, it would take longer to read through it. <laughs> and I can bounce back to other slides, especially those, um, if you have any questions about the way um, it was laid out from an infrastructure perspective, I know those slides were very hard to see. Um, sorry, I couldn't expand. I don't know why it won't let me uh, zoom in on them any. Yep, absolutely. I'll pop over there. Yeah, so this is the latest one. So what we're looking at, so you kind of have your you know, entry point into your cloud provider, whichever one you want. Um, what we have is CDN in front. It's also got a web application firewall, just help mitigate threats. Um, immediately after that, load balancers. So those are, um, you know, this is one application, this is the other application. Uh, so they're completely independent. And what that's doing is those tasks are individually stacked with the load balancer. So anytime it adds one, it removes one. Automated process just adds and removes it from your load balance, or yeah, from your load balancer. Um, in this case, one of our applications is actually using a shared storage. The other one we moved off of it, um, the API, because the shared storage didn't have the I.O. we needed. So it's actually using the direct on task um, the in container memory storage. We don't change the API a lot on our side. So the downside there, if you don't use the shared storage, anytime you make a change in your code, you have to redeploy the whole thing. So. Um, if you're not making many changes, that can be pretty great from the I.O. perspective. If you are, shared storage is definitely the preferred option. Um, and then, in this case, this is kind of showing all of our infrastructure right now in a simplified way. So, you know, we have our database, SNS. Uh, we're using uh, ElastiCache. We already had that up and running. If you wanted to containerize a Redis instance or a memcached, certainly you could containerize even more of this. Uh, for ease of use, we just already had it running, so we're not going to add another one for no particular reason. So, um, anything that could be explained better? Okay. I think you had a question. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's the, uh, the stock Nginx container image that's available out there. The nice part about that is, since we're, we have our own configuration file there that we're copying in each time we build it, it's just the update process is update to the latest one, and just rebuild. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing on PHP, FPM. Um, the P base PHP containers has an FPM version that they put out there. Uh, we're using the Debian base one, but you can use whichever one you wanted. Um, yeah, go. Ahead. 
the 600 apps? Uh, so uh, we have 600 apps in the store, both, well, it, you know, 600 in Android, 600 in iOS. Um, from an infrastructure of handling that perspective, I mean, obviously, actually putting the apps out there, Android and um, Google handle that, but, uh, you know, on the back end, we, um, actually, I don't know if Logan's in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's our kind of automation engineer, so he's been working with me, and we're building out automating those builds uh, because right now, obviously, rebuilding 600 app is very unpleasant. <laughs> so um, that's, that's actually something we're also building with containers. Um, so he's working on a process where, similar to this, it will fire up, uh, you know, 600 Android or and, uh, Linux containers to build Android apps simultaneously so we can speed that process up, process up and we're also using Fargate for that. Uh, we thought about that in the past. We started on native both platforms and so we've been running with that so far. Um, it's, we've done some React Native in the past. Um, we, we have an app that's kind of pseudo internal that's built in it. Um, some of the hiccups with that, if you're not keeping up with it well, have been painful. <laughs> so we, we've just stuck with the native so far. <laughs> it's all in ECS. It would be trivial to put it into a Kubernetes setup as well. No, no, it's in, ECS's version of that is a task, but it's essentially the same thing as pods. It's kind of their, their version of it. it. It's the AWS specific one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, because of the integration, obviously, the AWS, we're using their registry. Um, but um, you can actually host your own if you want. It, it's kind of irrelevant. They'll usually, they'll let you point to you, you know, whichever one. Um, there, there's obviously a lot of synergy on AWS. If you use their registry, it's easy to point to your image, so. You know, it, it's at least twice a month. Um, just to make sure patches and stuff are happening. Um, in between, if we're actually doing a lot of updates, uh, it could be five, six times a week. Uh, it just depends on the, the speed of updates. Like I said, on the API, we don't do a lot of them. Uh, it just, it's fairly mature at this point, so we don't do a lot of changes. That's why it's all direct in image code. Um, but then on the control panel side, those do happen pretty r routinely, so shared storage, the actual updates on the container side are kind of that twice a month, just getting getting patches and stuff in there to make sure we don't have any Nginx zero days that didn't <laughs> we're not paying attention to or things like that. Um, so yeah. Anything else? All right. I think my last slide was just that. Um, maybe? Maybe just Q and A. Yeah. Um, there's my work email. If you have any interest in talking about it further, feel free to email me or find me here the remainder of the day and tomorrow morning. Um, happy to talk about what we did, how we containerized things. If not, then Hope the rest of the day goes great for you guys. Now that I had to close this out. <laughs>